Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining the SIP protocol. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is a signaling protocol used for initiating, maintaining, modifying, and terminating real-time voice over IP communications between two or more endpoints over an IP network. But what do we mean when we say a signaling protocol? Well, it all comes down to what a VoIP communication looks like. Voice over IP or VoIP allows voice conversations to take place over packet-based IP networks. But just like traditional phone calls, VoIP requires a method to signal the endpoints and to manage voice communication sessions. Signaling performs many of the things we take for granted when we make a phone call. This includes things like locating and identifying the destination device of a phone call when we dial the phone number. Also making the endpoint we're calling actually ring so that the person on the other end can hear it and answer. Signaling is also responsible for sending audio tones to users like the busy tone, the ringback tone and call waiting tones. Signaling is also responsible for achieving specialized functions such as conference calling, call hold, call transfer, and other telephony features that we are familiar with. And finally, signaling is also responsible for performing the negotiation of session parameters, including the method of voice digitization, as well as the format of the media that's going to be sent. This negotiation ensures both sides can understand and process the incoming voice packets correctly. Now, SIP as a signaling protocol does all of these things and much more. But one of the most interesting things that you may not be aware of is that the SIP protocol doesn't actually carry the voice packets themselves. SIP is a control protocol that's used for initiating, maintaining, modifying, and terminating real-time sessions by allowing IP phones, VoIP software, VoIP servers, and other related devices to communicate successfully. SIP was standardized in 1999, and you can find a link to that standardization publication in the description below. Now, it's interesting to note that SIP was originally designed to mimic the signaling that we see in more traditional implementations of conventional telephony. But the idea was that SIP would eventually come to support many new multimedia applications with extensions for video, streaming media, and other services. Unlike traditional telephony, SIP has been described as a client-server protocol of equipotent peers. Now, what that essentially means is that SIP operates in a client-server manner where any entity can act as either a client sending requests or a server responding to those requests. Furthermore, each SIP endpoint has equal capability to both initiate and respond making the system decentralized and flexible. One of the strangest and non-intuitive facts about SIP is that the protocol's payload doesn't actually carry voice. SIP allows endpoints to communicate with each other to perform session upkeep and management during a VoIP session. The VoIP packets themselves are sent over a data stream that is independent from the SIP signaling. Take a look at this diagram for a clearer understanding of how this works. Let's say we have two IP phones connected to an enterprise network. These phones register to what is known as a SIP server. This is sometimes called an IPPBX or a call control server. In any case, it's the server that provides the voice service to the IP phone. And the server could actually be on a local network or it may even be hosted somewhere on the internet. Now, during a conversation between the two IP phones, there are SIP messages that are exchanged between the phones and the SIP server. And these deal with call setup, call teardown, touch tone tones being sent, known as DTMF, as well as other call control functions. SIP messages are also exchanged between the two phones directly. These messages include functionalities such as codec choice and off-hook and on-hook messages. These are essentially the messages that are sent when you lift the receiver of an IP phone or when you hang up. And finally, we have the actual voice packets that travel between the two phones directly without the aid of an intermediary device. A protocol called Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, is used to carry the voice packets, but we'll talk about that in another video.
Now, in the case where the call is initiated from inside an organization to an outside destination, once again, the same set of SIP and voice packet communications take place. But this time, they occur with the SIP entity that exists on the public switched telephone network or the PSTN. This may be a gateway within the telco's network or it may be a SIP end device. In each case, an organization would procure what is known as a SIP trunk, which is essentially a connection from the local organization to the worldwide telephony network. Now, some of these concepts may be new to you, and if so, not to worry. These will be or have been covered in some of my other videos, so search through those to find out more. The important thing to note here is that the signaling, which is achieved using SIP, is a completely separate IP communication. So what else does SIP actually do? Well, at the beginning, I did mention that SIP is responsible for the signaling and the management of voice conversations. However, this is not entirely true. SIP actually performs control and management of many different types of real-time sessions, not just voice, but video, instant messaging, presence, and a whole myriad of collaboration services, including multi-party conferencing, desktop and media sharing, as well as a whole slew of unified communication services. Well, I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you'd like me to address other related topics, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And remember, if there are things related to what we talked about that you're not sure about and you wanna learn more about, do a search in my videos. You may find that topic that you're looking for. If you don't find it, feel free to share what topics you would like me to cover in future videos. Well, I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I'd like to thank you for watching.